The Black Celts, The African Substratum Theory by Ibrahim Ali. Chapter 10, The Neolithic Revolution. The agricultural revolution brought a wave of dynamic changes that would reshape Europe permanently. The dark-skinned Mesolithic hunter-gatherers were faced with a new wave of human migrations from the South. Migrants from the Levant, the Natufians, would slowly expand their knowledge of farming. The Middle East Epipaleolithic period, known as Mesolithic in Europe, provides clear evidence that the Natufians were gradually developing a complex society based around the development of a sedentary lifestyle and a range of innovative cultural products. This period between 23,000 BC and 11,000 BC would see lifestyle changes from hunter gathering and fishing communities to settled, well organized farming societies. The spread of agriculture was slow and gradual, as Lisa A. Mahar highlights below. <clears throat> Gordon Child coined the term Neolithic Revolution to refer to the development of human control over the reproduction and evolution of plants and animals, which arguably was the single most significant social, cultural, and biological transition since the origin of our species. Many revolutionary features of the Natufian and subsequent Neolithic periods developed gradually over a long time in the late Pleistocene, Pleistocene. During more than 10,000 years, we see evidence of the very early systematic exploitation of plants and animal species, mobile art and orientation in a range of material evidence for specialized theologies, nets, cordage, wood, construction, and refinement of older technologies, Lisa A. Mahar. Evolutionary Anthropology, 21 and 69 through 81, 2012. The diffusion of farming technology marked the beginning of a clash of cultures. The Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, who we now know were very dark-skinned, faced a new challenge from a more dynamic people who would start the Neolithic revolution. Evidence suggests that these newcomers spoke proto Hamito Semitic, Afro Asiatic languages. Dark skinned Mesolithic tribes came face to face with equally dark skinned Proto Hamito Semitic Neolithic tribes. Both the Mesolithic and Neolithic population have left a deep contribution to the European genetic pool. Some mitochondrial DNA studies suggest that the contribution of Near Eastern farmers to the European gene pool is about 20%, 15 and 16. A similar percentage, 22%, is suggested by a Y chromosome study carried out by Simeo. However, the data and where re-examined by Shikihi, who found through a different mythology an average contribution of between 50% and 65% by Near Eastern farmers to the European gene pool. Estimations depend not only on the markers employed, but also on the model used and its inherent assumptions. A recent study that makes use of mitochondrial DNA, Y chromosome DNA, and other autosomal markers find that the Neolithic contribution is much higher than 20% and decreases from east to west, as expected under the Near Eastern Demic Diffusion Model. Phineas Finhasi R. Ford, J. Ammerman, A.J., 2005 tracing the origin and spread of agriculture in Europe. 
The introduction of the Neolithic into Europe is closely associated with the arrival of men with the African Y DNA E1B1. The Y chromosome analysis permitted confirmation of the existence in Spain approximately 7,000 years ago of two haplogroups previously associated with the Neolithic transition, G2A and E1B11BA1B. <laughs> These results are highly consistent, consistent with those previously found by Neolithic individuals from French late Neolithic individuals indicating a surprising temporal genetic homogeny in these groups. The high frequency of G2A in Neolithic samples in Western Europe could suggest furthermore that the role of men during Neolithic dispersal could be greater than currently estimated. Marie Lacan, ancient DNA suggests that leading role played by men in the Neolithic dissemination proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in November 2011. The haplogroup E1B1 can be traced back to East Africa and is believed to have originated 26,000 years ago. The earliest farming communities in ancient Palestine the Natufians were also mainly E1B1. The spread of agriculture from the Levant was mainly due to the people with the, this haplogroup. The subclad EV13 emerged from E1B1. EM78 around 6000 BC, Fulvio Crucini. F-U-L-V-I-O-C-R-U-C-I-A-N-I believed that EV13 developed from an Egyptian hub before subsequently migrating into the Balkans, expanding into the European hinterland, I'm probably supposed to be winterland, along the Danube River and spreading along the southern Mediterranean coast, eventually colonizing the entire Western European Atlantic fringe. DNA analysis have shown that the male population belonged to specific haplogroups, namely E1B1, EV13, G2A, T1A1, and J. The spread of the hamosemitic Afroasiatic can be associated with this sub-Saharan haplogroup. Some have attempted to link the spread of EV13 with the spread of Proto-Indo-European. However, this is extremely unlikely since it is a sub-Saharan haplogroup. The reality of the situation is quite simple. A sub-Saharan African haplogroup was introduced directly into Greece and the Balkans along with the spread of all agriculture. The male haplogroup T1A1 occurs at exceedingly high frequencies in areas associated with Phoenician settlements such as Cyprus, Cadiz, Ibiza, and northern Morocco. The distribution of this haplogroup is widespread. Haplogroup T is one of the most widely dispersed paternal lineages in the world. In Europe, it makes up only 1% of the population on most of the ancient of most of the continent, except in Greece, Macedonia, and in Italy, where it exceeds 4%, and in the Iberia, where it reaches 2.5, peaking at 10% in Cadiz, and it's over 15% in Ibiza. The maximal worldwide frequency for haplogroup T is observed in East Africa, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, and Tanzania, and in the Middle East, especially the South Caucasus, Southern Iraq, Southwest Iran, Oman, and Southern Egypt 
where it accounts for approximately 5 to 15 percent of the male lineages. Over 50 percent of haplogroup T has been reported in some tribes in northern Somalia and Djibouti. Another hot spot are the Fulani people of Cameroon, 18 percent. Besides these regions and, and Europe, T is found in isolated pockets as far as Zambia, South Africa, India, Central Asia, and Northeast Asia, including Southern Siberia, Mongolia, 2%, and Northern China, 1%. www.upedia.com slash Europe slash haplogroup underscore T underscore Y dash DNA dot SHTM for reference. Scientists have recently discovered remarkable high occurrences of this haplogroup in the Somalia region of eastern Ethiopia between Dairi Dawa and Jijigaba. J-I-J-I-G-A. Jijiga. There we go. It has also been discovered that this haplogroup could play a major role in the performance of marathon runners from the Horn of Africa. It is positively associated with individuals who have abilities in long distance running. It was found in 14% of elite runners. Considering the Somalia region of eastern Ethiopia has the highest frequency of haplogroup T1A1A recorded so far, it is a puzzle why Somalias from Ethiopia have not appeared in the Ethiopian national team, even though the majority of Arusi or Romo population tend to have haplogroup J. An astonishing 43% of Arusi elite runners were found to have haplogroup T1A1, a clear indication that this haplogroup can positively be associated with becoming a successful long-distance runner. C. Morin Collin, 2004, Y chromosome haplogroups of elite Ethiopian endurance runners, human genetics, 15 and 6. <clears throat> For reference, in 1942, Gordon Child proposed that the large group of these early farming communities led to their need to expand into new regions. Child proposed that the expansion of agriculture was due to human migration and not due to adoption via commerce with incoming new communities. However, we know that the spread of agriculture can involve more than one mechanism. To understand the African substratum theory and its association with the adoption of farming, we must appreciate that there are several ways in which the knowledge of farming spread. The late Merrick Zvebils, spelling M-A-R-E-K, Z-V-E-L-E-B-I-L, -E -E his research approached has enriched our knowledge of Mesolithic-Neolithic interactions by applying bioarchaeology. His paper, the, Archeo the Agricultural Transition and the Origins of Neolithic Society in Europe, has strengthened our understanding. Below are some mechanisms that need to be considered. <clears throat> Folk migration. Direct population movement with a direct population replacement. Demic diffusion. Non-direction colonization of small areas by small households or groups with gradual population replacement. Elite dominance. Arrival of a social elite who impose themselves over an existing population causing genetic community with genetic markers of new elite populations being retained. Infiltration, small and gradual infiltration, sometimes of specialist groups with specialist skills, 
e.g. craftsmen slash women. Sometimes not genetically detectable, but there are there may leave behind small scale genetic signature. Leapfrog colonization. This involves selective colonization of an area forming an enclave settlement among native inhabitants and giving rise to a genetic island. Frontier mobility involves small scale movement of population within contact zones. Contact involves trade with and with no genetic replacement. For reference, see Zevibil Marik, 2001, The Agricultural Transition and Origins of Neolithic Society in Europe, for reference. The Mediterranean islands of Cyprus was settled by Near Eastern farmers around 82,000, no, 8200 BP. For Crete, the next neighboring island, it took another 1,000 years before farming would be adopted. This still poses a real puzzle for archaeologists. There is ample evidence for the widespread use of boats by ancient communities in southern Italy and Crete, and yet the slow spread, a thousand years, of farming from Cyprus, a relatively short distance away, certainly needs further investigation. One route involved maritime-based colonization of Cyprus, central Anatolia, and Crete, and Greece, starting from the Levantine base, from a Le Levantine base. The second route was a land route from central and western Anatolia into Thrace and spreading into southeast Europe. Penhasi comments on this. In their analysis of craniometric affinities between populations point to the homogeneity between Katal Hoyuk and early Neolithic Greek and southeastern European groups. The homogeneity contrasts with the pronounced heterogeneity found among other pre-pottery Neolithic groups in the Near East. On the basis of these results, the hypothesis that a founder population from central Anatolia represented by specimens from Kato Hayuk spread into southeast and central Europe. At the present time, it is unclear whether farming reached southeast Europe by means of secondary demic expansion from Anatolia or as a continuation of the initial dispersal involving Cyprus, Crete, and mainland Southeast Greece. Penhasi R. Plukinik, 2004, Kerr Anthropolo. Yeah. <laughs> For reference, the spread of farming across Europe involved nonlinear successive waves of expansion. Farmers from the Levant and Anatolia pushed into Greece by the 8th millennium, before the present era. Circa 6000 BC followed by a pause of several centuries. The push continued into Europe following two routes. One route followed by northern Mediterranean coast, and reached the Iberian Peninsula by the 7th millennium BP, circa 5000 BC. The second route involves pushing into the Rhine-Danube region up to the Paris Basin by the early 7th millennium BP, circa 5000 BC. Again, a long pause occurred and finally the spread of farming moved into northwestern Europe by the end of the 6th millennial BP, circa 4500 BC, finally reaching southern Scandinavia, Britain, and Ireland. The investigation of fats preserved in Neolithic ceramics vessels have shown 
that early farmers practice dairying from the onset of domestication in the Near East. It was not a latter development in Europe, but was an early adopted process. See Antiquity 79, 822 through 894. The earliest indication of domestic plants in the Nile Valley region is from Nubia at R12, dating from the 8th millennial BP, circa 6000 BC, Knowledge of farming soon spread southward from the Levant to Egypt. The adoption of agriculture in Egypt, for, in Egypt's fertile regions by the 8th millennial BP, circa 6000 BC, occurred at sites such as Meribde, Beni Salama, and Sei, S-A-I. It later spread to Egypt Fayum region at Com K and Com W at around mid 7th millennial BP, circa 5500 BC. Further west in northern Morocco, we have some earlier dates at Ifri, Odadain, and at Kaf Tat El Gar at around mid 8th millennial BP circa 6500 BC. The early spread to Morocco was due to the influences from Iberia following the introduction animals and plants by Neolithic seafarers. However, the region between Morocco and Libya has not uncovered an adoption of farming during that period. However, the absence of farming may be due to the dominance of thriving pastoral communities. See Mulazani, the emergence of the Neolithic in North Africa, Quaternary International, <clears throat> for reference. These developments would have a deep impact on Europe and agricultural revolution, with the newcomers introducing animals and plants, leaving behind a legacy of animal call words in modern Celtic languages. New cultural traditions were also introduced, which resulted in the construction of giant megalithic monuments like Stonehenge. Domestication of Animals The brief look at the mechanism behind the spread of farming leads us to look at the domestication of animals and how early African settlers brought their animals with them. This explains why the present-day Celtic speakers still use African hamosemitic, Afro-Asiatic words, especially in connection with animal hus husbandry. Researchers are not agreed on the dates for the earliest domestication of animals in Egypt. Some propose an introduction between the 8th and 9th millennial BC. At Nabata, Playa, Bil Kesiba, an assessment of early stock keeping in ancient Egypt by Linzel has the following. The evidence from the Napta Playa area remains isolated, with no contemporary remains recorded from neighboring areas. Claims for very early domesticated cattle in northern Sudan, starting from 7200 BC, which would have provided independent support for early finds in the western desert, were revised as the bones come from large wild bovids instead of domesticated cattle. Just as bovines, bovids. If the 9th and 8th millennial BC date for domesticated cattle at Nabtaplea Bir Kesiba is correct, cattle keeping in Africa is as old as or older than in the Near Eastern domestication centers. Therefore, the punitive or putative domestic cattle from Nabta Playa are a crucial important in the discussion 
on the existence of a local domestication of cattle in Africa. However, based on a recent genetic study on over 1,500 modern cattle individuals worldwide, it is hypothesized that extant African unhumped cattle are descendants of domesticated cattle from the Near East, but with a high level of admixture with local African Aurochs, A-U-R-O-C-H-S. This hypothesis of admixture remains speculative in the absence of genomes from African Orochians, plural of the word I said earlier. Only from the Middle Neolithic onward, 6100 through 5400 BC, do unco uncontroversial domestic cattle remain, remains appear. Now, metrically distinct from Orosh, A U R O C H S, in the Napta Beer Kisaba region. For reference, Lincel, New Archaeozoology data from Fayum Neolithic with a critical assessment of the evidence of early stock keeping in Egypt. 2014 for reference. <laughs> Animal husbandry. The distribution of various animals across the British Isles would have been affected by the nature of the environment. Horses existed in significant numbers in Britain during the Mesolithic period, as shown by excavations at Gauls Cave. G O U G H. The lack of evidence for the presence of horses in Ireland during the same period still remains a mystery. Some presume the nature of landscape might have been unfavorable in some way. Domesticated species such as cattle, bos torres, and sheep, ovis atis, speaking Latin, were established by the early Neolithic while the horse, ecos caballus, arrives a little later circa 4000 BC. The Irish Quantary Fauna Project has shown that some Mesolithic communities had knowledge of domesticated animals. The domesticated dog, Canis familiaris, was present in Ireland during the Mesolithic era. Interestingly, the Irish Quantary Fauna Project has shown that carry red deer were introduced by Neolithic settlers. Numerous red deer, antler bones, and artifact have been recovered from Neolithic burials, 4700 BP, at Anog, County Limerick. These antlers were made into mushroom-headed pins and many have been found in passage tombs. The earliest date we have for the remains of red deer in Ireland is 4190 BP. For Stonestown County, Longsford, see Quantary Science Reviews, volume 16, PP 129 through 159. 1997. For reference, the pioneering farmers entered the Balkans and then spread slowly along the two routes described. These pioneers successfully adapted to different environments and were able to breed their animals. In, it is intriguing that these sub-Saharan Africans were able to fill their boats with their animals and navigate the dangerous Atlantic Ocean they were highly skilled and master navigators, the sea, masters at navigating the seas using the stars. The application of DNA analysis has increased our knowledge of the origin of domesticated cattle 
and confirms the introduction of cattle from Africa via a maritime route. The modern and ancient mitochondrial DNA sequence we present here do not support the currently accepted hypothesis of a single Neolithic origin in the Near East. Breeds domesticated in the Near East are and introduced in Europe during the Neolithic diffusion probably intermixed, at least in some regions, with local wild animals and with African cattle introduced by maritime routes. As a consequence, European breeds should represent a more diverse and important genetic resource than previously recognized, especially in the southern regions. Albino Beja Peria, the origin of European cattle, evidence from modern and ancient DNA, for reference. Domestication of cats. Cats have a special place in the culture of many African and Middle Eastern societies. They are treated with the utmost respect. Growing up in such a society, one was told, be nice to cats, otherwise they will curse you. They are seen as clean animals and obviously beneficial for keeping mice and rodents away. Evidence from early Egyptian tombs have revealed cats buried near humans at Herod. Canopolis during pre-dynastic times, indicating an awful close relationship, and it is feasible that domestication of cats reaches as far back as 6,000 years ago. See Journal of Archaeological, Archaeological Science, 45, 2014. Since the earliest domestication of cats might have occurred in Egypt, it is not surprising that the word for cat in ancient Egypt is also the same name and other Hamo-Semitic Afro-Asiatic languages. The knowledge of domestication spread from ancient Egypt and the Natufian Levant. It is subsequently spread to the Balkans and the rest of the Europe and the rest of Europe. Studies have indicated that the domestication of cats in China may have been stimulated by the transport of these animals from Western Asia along the trade routes accompanied by other animals such as cattle, goats, and sheep. See Pinaz, 2014, January 7th, 111, pages 116 through 120. Animal call words. The Welsh educator David Thomas, OBE, completed the only known study of linking animal call words within human migrations. David Thomas, OBE, was born in 1866 in Lanwin near Lampeter, Cardonshire, Wales. His pioneering work, Animal Call Words, A Study in Human Migration, was published in 1939. He left South Wales in 1889 to take up an education, to take up an educational post in North Wales. He was dedicated to recording oral tradition of Cardiganshire and was surprised to find such a large number of dialects spoken within the principality. When he was promoted to inspector of schools, the number of districts he was responsible for increased to cover portions of 10 countries, counties, extending from Swadon to Shrewsbury and Heffordshire. During his 33 years as inspector of schools, David Thomas was able to study the different dialects and subsequently piece together the link between local animal call words and human migrations. As a result of this study, Thomas came across an interesting discovery. <laughs> it was in connection with this research work that in South Cardiganshire, in the very part where I had expected an important dialectical discovery to be made. I came across a strange system of numeration which had not previously been recorded, a system which the best 
the logicists, the logicists of the continent regarded as belonging to an epoch, an epoch earlier than that of the most ancient Irish manuscript and used by those Goidelic Celts who had reached southwest Wales from Ireland, David Thomas. The inhabitants of the English co counties of Her Herefordshire and Cumbria currently only speak the English language. However, rural shepherds continue to count using Welsh numbers well into the, ninth, well into the 19th century. These shepherds did not know what language they were counting in, a clear example of substratum theory. David Thomas observed the same phenom phenomenon with animal call words. For example, the animal word sock, bis, thir, quish, etc., are derived from Hamio Semitic Afro Asiatic languages. Although many words in Celtic are Indo European, others have been inherited from languages spoken by people who inhabited these islands in antiquity. The African call word for cats is found in many parts of the world. In Norway, people say ps, ps, for calling cats. Koreans use ts, ts, ts. In Mayan, we have miss, Finnish, kisa, while the Irish have Pish wish for calling cats. Hmm. And the East African Somali use bis bis for calling cats. It must be stressed that these calls are not onomanopoet. Onomanopias. <laughs> this is, that is, they are derived from the sound that the particular animal makes. Whereas, for example, in China, the word for cat is Mao. And in Vietnamese, there is Meow. Both are onomatopoeias and are derived from the sound cats make. In English, a cat is said to make the sound Meow. However, the forms derived from the word bis are derived from Hamio-Semitic, Afro-Asiatic name calls for cat, i.e. bis bis biset tis tis. This word was transformed to European by African Neolithic, was transferred to Europe by African Neolithic farmers that colonized these islands. Thomas begins his work by saying, British civilization has its origins neither in the Celtic people nor Romans, but with those people who came over to our country when the pharaohs were ruling over Egypt and when Mesopotamian kings were sending out prospectors and traders to the utmost ends of the known world. After years of research, Thomas came to the following conclusion. I have been forced to believe that still other words are found among these terms used to sp speaking to domestic animals. This is due to the fact that these terms are seldom and never taught, seldom or never taught, but simply used by parents and in their everyday work and are heard by their children and thus handed down from generation to generation for thousands of years with but little or no change. The distribution of these call words were mapped by Thomas. He carefully followed the occurrence of these names and then followed the trail each of each tribe. He was able to map the dis distribution across different countries. <clears throat> the Hutch tribe, a tribe that brought the Neolithic to South Wales from the Persian Gulf. They traveled through the Mediterranean and into Atlantic. They call word, the call word, quich, also, which, which, wish, hist, etc., 
was introduced from Arabia, where it is used to call camels. This form is found in Glamorgan, Carmatherin, and Pembrokeshire. The word dir adira, dir adira, D I R A D I R A, spaces between the R and the A, is used to call the goats for milking in Arabic. In Wiltshire, Glamorgan, and Monmouth, the form Derry, Dara, Dara, and Dairi is associated with calling goats, sheep, and cows for milking. And we get dairy from it. Personal additive to the script, not written on paper. Dairy. <clears throat> Back to the book. <laughs> oh, my bad. The third tribe, T-H-U-R-R. Another Arabic call word, tar, tara, Atara, Chu, and Chi have been inherited by the inhabitants of Munster and Connaught, Ireland. Dushi, that's really what it says. D H U R hyphen S H E E. <laughs> Manx Isle of Man, Wiltshire, and Northern Ireland. From the distribution of Derry and Thur tribes, Thomas believed they arrived in their islands at different times, with the Derry tribe arriving first. The Quiche tribe, or Quiche tribe, Q-U-I-S-H tribe. The term X, X, or is used in Oman. Various similar forms have been found in Devon. Kosh, Cork, Kush, Shitlands Isle, Kush, Kathnis, and Cardiganshire, Welsh, Kuinshkish. Terms for driving away fowls and cats. Fowls. The Kek tribe, a guttural sound from North Africa used to communicate with camels, horses, and goats. Camel drivers from North Africa use ik, hik. I don't know if they're clicking. It, it, there's a lot of clash words here. <laughs> ECT. Similar forms are found used in Devon, Wiltshire, Summeris, no Somerset, Hereford, Worcester, Shropshire, Pembroke, Merionoth, Lenark, and Perth. The Truth, the Truth tribe. This tribe is thought to be derived directly from Egypt or from an Egyptian colony in the Mediterranean. The term tris, 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 tris is used as a call to donkeys in Egypt. It appeared as twisin, trusin, to call cows in Karamith, Pembroke, and Cardigan. There is a wide, there is a wide concurrence of this term in Scotland. It is found in the form of trush, tris, mach, oh, tr that's one word, trushamach, truis, drus, trus, and trushi, mainly used for driving cattle. The souk people, it did not have nothing to do with pigs. <laughs> Personal note, back to the work. The migration of the Souk people took place in the Neolithic. The name occurs in various forms. Sak in Arabic, Sik in Egypt, Zak in Tunisia, Sigal in Arabia, Sukkali in Denmark, Zug 
in Holland, Sick in Germany, or Sikh. And in Britain, we have various forms, including Sikh, Zug, Sika, Siki, Zuk. Thomas observed how the Sikh people settled in considerable numbers in Ireland. This is evidenced by the presence of the call word for a calf in the form of Suk Suk, Suk Suk, or Suki. Hmm. Thomas also mapped the spread of Goidelic Irish terms into Wales. He came to an interesting conclusion as the, to the origins of the Welsh. These anthropologists <laughs> further believe that the Brythonic Celts settled in considerably large numbers in England than in Wales, with the result that England contains a present more Brythonic blood than Wales. The Welsh language is thus spoken not by people of Brythonic descent, but by descendants of those people who the Brythonics had subjugated. David Thomas, chapter... Roman numerals, I'm sorry. XV111, the Brythonic invasion of Britain. The pioneering research of David Thomas has never been repeated. The link between the animal call words of Scotland and Egypt are particularly fascinating. It adds further support to the legend of 